So race day of the Tarawera Ultra Marathon. There has been a course change uh, because there's been some land slips. So um, my 100k race starts at 8.30 in the morning instead of 7. So catching a later bus, I've just seen Nat go to her uh, bus for the 50k start. race thoughts a lot of what we're thinking about before the race is things that can go wrong and what problems we're going to have that need to be solved cover all those things a bit of stretching uh, yesterday a bit of um, yeah just all the, the preparation with the various you know, Vaseline sunscreen uh, things like that as well as uh, planning the schedule for the um, the course now with the the course changes the um, the aid stations are actually a bit closer uh, most of the way there is one part um, a bit later on in the race where it's 13 k's where um, it might be a bit difficult for me to survive just with the one soft last but i am going with um, just the belt they have changed the mandatory gear it's going to be a mild day it's not going to be particularly cold at all um, throughout the day minimal gear required no mandatory gear um, if you pass the first 45 k's in less than five and a half hours uh, my race schedule should put me on track to do that in around about four hours um, if I do more than four and a half hours then I'm probably having some trouble and um, then I will probably need to grab my head torch because I'll be probably walking it in what? Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of the people of Ngāti Tarawhai, we like to welcome you to the beautiful shores of Okataina. We are here to ensure that you are welcomed appropriately onto the Svenua, on this land, and to also ensure that your ancestors and your loved ones travel with you throughout your journey today. So from our people to you all, kia kaha, be strong, tēnā koutou. It is appropriate we begin with the karakia. Oh, wai rea, wai rea, wai rea i rua, wai rea i raro, wai rea i arangi nui a tui honei, wai rea i apapato e nuku e takoto nei, wai rea ngā tapu, wai rea ngā wehi, wai rea ngā mana, wai rea ngā mākutu. 
competition goes in the 102k there's about a thousand people uh, entered and um, it is a golden ticket race so the um, top uh, two male and female get an automatic entry into the western states 100 race which is otherwise a lottery only um, entry event so there will be um, some quite quick people at the pointy end uh, going for those golden tickets um, so yeah there'll be a few unbeatable people i would say um, unless i have a very good day um, but I, I'm not quite at top fitness, so I'm not going to um, try to run with uh, the, the quicker people at the front. Um, you know, if I was properly marathon fit, then then maybe, but um, not today. I not quite have not quite at my full marathon fitness. <laughs> Change uh, the buses couldn't get down to Lake Okatina, so they dropped us 1k from the uh, bottom. Uh, that was actually quite a good um, course um, change because it still allowed a long um, stretch on an uphill, um, wide uphill road uh, to sort out uh, positions before heading into the single track forest where it was pretty hard to overtake, and we were just um, running single file for most of the way through there. There's a request by Nat to have a fair bit of footage of the um, race before it joined the 50k uh, course. And um, so you've got some uh, sections here where yeah, you just get a real feel for uh, what it is to run through the Tarawera Forest. both found with the uh, Tarawera single track was it's a lot less technical than uh, what we've been training on so a lot easier running very flowing um, the only thing with being single track was just a bit difficult to overtake but apart from that it was um, a very much uh, continuous uh, running um, event that made it quite difficult for some people um, who are used to training on trails where you are required to stop and hike um, at multiple uh, occasions whereas the Tarawera course there's just a lot of running and if you've been watching the vlog you've seen that I've uh, 
been uh, tailoring the training to do that, to uh, get used to continuous running, working on the fitness, and um, it is more of a continuous running uh, trail ultra rather than um, a hike and uh, run ultra. Okay, so one hour check in, done uh, nearly 11 k's. It was uh, straight into the forest with a lot of steep uh, single track. Um, first 5k is 400 meters elevation, so a fair bit of hiking in that. And then, been, uh, yeah, feeling good. Been recovering quite well after each hill and just uh, rolling through. With my peak weekly mileage just sitting over 100 k's, I knew that I'd be struggling a little bit. Um, knowing that the other elites are doing close to double that um, in most of their um, big build-ups. However, I was feeling pretty comfortable at this stage. see this is about half past 10 in the morning there's Lake Oriaka at the left on the Strava flybys uh, Nat is at the bottom of the screen doing our 50k and on the top of the screen there and our courses are going to meet in the middle Okay, two hours check in. I've uh, just done a very technical uh, route section, so lots of tree routes. Um, got into a steady pace, just cruising along now. It's starting to get a little bit harder, obviously. A bit over. 20, whoops, that was not what I meant to do. Uh, 23 k's in, and uh, yeah, so going, going okay. So some people are dropping back, some people going forward. I'm just cruising along, enjoying it. So we weren't sure who was going to get to the Blue Lake first. Hopefully Nat would be, so I could uh, see her as I went through. Uh, but as you can see, even with the 20 minute delayed at 102k, um, I still went through first and uh, didn't see Nat on that, that part of the course.
Okay, so three hour check in, and nearly 34 k's, starting to suffer a bit, struggle. I'm feeling like it's a very aerobic run, so aerobically pretty tired, but haven't been too bad. Um, when I've had a gel, just in between the gels, it starts to go a bit low. Passing a lot of the uh, 50k runners, we did start um, nearly two hours after them, and they've got um, probably 15k to go at this point or less. Um, yeah, it's uh, it's nice in the shade. Do notice it quite sunny. Have had some forefoot pain again when it's not forest. Beautiful and soft underfoot in the forest. My foot likes that. But anyway, three hours in, a third the distance done. So you can see here, I've got my first bit of uh, technical issue with the camera. Uh, you do press it three times to turn the camera um, from backwards facing to forwards facing and must have pressed it six times so it went forward facing and then uh, turned backwards again. A few k's after this clip I actually uh, fell over uh, descending into redwoods. Uh, there was a lot of stairs and it wasn't on the stairs that I fell over but there was a, um, a fist size uh, stump that I uh, kicked and then um, fell down as uh, quite a steep downhill. It was uh, quite a uh, soft landing though, uh, being a uh, soft, uh, you know, dark soil. Coming through. Yep. Thank you. Coming through. Thank you. I did get that soil and everything though. Got um, uh, black hands and uh, like on my handheld uh, uh, bottle as well as uh, soil in my camera so there's actually very limited footage for the rest of the vlog um, but I will uh, keep vlogging and let you know how I went with the event. We did some sightseeing after the race and I'll include some footage of that so you get another good feel of uh, what New Zealand has to offer. Hi guys I'm here in New Zealand I'm 41 k's into the ultra marathon so yeah on the home stretch now as you can see it's like beautiful forest at the moment that I'm in and just a quick update because I've got a goal and I'm going to keep going so I'll check in when I finish. So you can see on the Strava flyby during that video that would have been 41 k's around about the bottom of the screen there and uh, at the time I would have been at the finish line and we were wondering why we didn't see each other. Uh, but you can see as we came back, um, I ran through and uh, was very close, but um, just missed her as she was running through uh, to finish her 50k and I was about to head out and do another loop. You might have seen in week 47 of my Journey to Tarawera vlog, Nat ran the Yarrabella 56k Ultra here in Adelaide and uh, she actually ran Tarawera 50k one hour faster. Hi guys, checking in. So I finished... Um, I'm back at my accommodation now and you can see the lake behind us but I smashed my goal of under seven getting under seven hours so I'm super stoked it was a PB for me for a trail ultra and the course is amazing and I recommend getting over here and doing it if you want to do an amazing overseas ultra. So although I fell over and took a little bit of skin off both knees I um, wasn't too affected by the fall just had to spend a bit longer at Redwood Aid Station to uh, get all cleaned up with uh, some water. I still got to the aid station at the finish line in three hours 58, 
So right on track with my um, four hour prediction. And um, when I got there, my drop bag wasn't there. So I spent most of the time at the aid station just uh, staggering around looking for the drop bag. And I didn't really refuel that well. That had all my uh, gels for the rest of the race. It had been sent out to the Lake Aid Station at 86K. So um, yeah, no, uh, no gels for me. There was another person um, in the top 20 as well who uh, had the same problem. His drop bag had been sent to the wrong aid station. So yeah, it was quite unfortunate. It was lucky it wasn't uh, one of the, uh, the leading uh, women because we were going through it around about the same time as them and it would have um, stuffed up their race. Uh, but yeah, still not good. If I had required my mandatory gear, it wouldn't have been there. These kind of things do happen in races. We saw in the Heisen 105 in week 51 of the vlog where um, there was an error with the course not being uh, marked properly and uh, that affected a lot of the uh, front runners. So after a five minute aid station stop, I headed out and it was quite hot um, being uh, mid afternoon and the wheels started to fall off a bit at around 50K. So I um, had been really struggling with um, the aerobic effort and had to slow right down. Um, being quite warm and also the fact that I hadn't um, properly fueled at the aid station, I hadn't sat down, walked for a couple of k's thinking that I'd be walking the rest of the way in uh, but I did stop at the uh, next aid station and uh, had a proper refuel. I got um, about 600 mils of coke into me, the black fuel um, to try to get me going as well as some chips and a watermelon and then uh, once I got out of the aid station, a very slow um, stop again. I slowly started to get running again at a slow shuffle. The volunteers at all the aid stations are really good. And also had a um, person who was crewing, one of the leading females, and he had a good chat to me and said that, yeah, the bit coming up, there was some shade. And um, cause I, I told him that I was cooked and I, uh, yeah, I did feel a lot better when the, uh, when I got my body temperature down walking in the shade. So, um, yeah, started to get more running in and um, slowly improve from there. So despite having no gels, I was able to uh, refuel at each aid station. I was still steadily losing places uh, with people coming through. The aid station at 62K had a uh, much quicker stop, but I uh, still made sure that I had a lot of uh, fuel, uh, put some ice in my uh, bottle, as well as grabbing a uh, banana. So I was finding that in between aid stations, I would carry the banana and then have that uh, when I started to feel a bit low. That actually worked quite well. So um, I was thinking that it was just the calories or the um, caffeine from the gels that were lifting me, but it was just having um, just having some sort of intake was um, enough to uh, get me feeling good um, in between aid stations. And what I was finding was that I was actually starting to run faster than uh, some of the people that had overtaken me. However, at the next aid station, 73K, all the people who I had passed uh, came through again. I was having long aid station stops because I only had one uh, soft flask. Uh, in my drop bag, I had the, um, the vest where I was carrying two um, bottles. My aid stations were a lot slower for the sections that I needed more fluid and need, needed to refuel. Um, so, but that was okay because I was uh, fresh enough and able to run quite well in between the aid stations. I was running quite well, uh, running on the uphills as well as the downs. As I mentioned earlier, there was that uh, bigger um, distance between the two aid stations, between 73 and 86k, being the 13k's. My forefoot pain had been coming and going, so I'd go from running to walking and it'd flare up for a little bit as I'd change from running to walking, um, or if I ran for extended periods of time. And that a 13k stretch was a bit too long for me to be running continuously on it. And um, I found that at about 84, 85k, um, I'd been running on a steady uphill, um, so I ran the uphill really well, passed a few people, um, but then uh, on the down I had to actually stop to a walk, even though it was a really gentle um, runnable downhill, I had to stop to walk um, because yeah, my pain was just sort of at 8 or 9 out of 10, it was a really high uh, foot pain, I just had to stop the, uh, stop the pounding on the foot, so um, yeah, just walked it out until the pain went down and then went back to running again. So I did have a few more challenges than um, than some people out there with my drop bag being misplaced and uh, a bit of foot pain to deal with. I still had the outside hope of running the whole um, course in 10 hours. I'd gone through the 53k in 5 hours 7. So quite a big blowout for that 8k section, um, more than an hour. But um, uh, then after that, I was around about you know, uh, 70Ks in seven hours, uh, which means that you know, there's an outside chance that I could uh, get the sub 10 hours. However, with my foot um, slowing me down a lot and my, um, my longer stops at the aid stations meant that it was a bit hard for me to uh, keep on track. 
So I was enjoying myself out there. One of the main reasons why I go to an event like this is there's plenty of people to chase, plenty of competition. And um, yeah, I was getting a fair bit of that. Incredibly quick times in a very competitive field. Always a very competitive field here at the Time 102K is considered the prestigious event uh, of the four titles to win. There are only about four or five of us uh, that ran with a soft flask only. Most people were uh, with a light um, uh, vest that carried uh, two uh, flasks. Just to pick off an, one of the persons that was just wearing a handheld at about 90k. And then I also had some competition at the Redwoods Aid Station. I just sat down with some water and I was grabbing some chips and then uh, saw two uh, females go through. And um, so I headed out and I had my chips on the run as I was um, going in the last six Ks. And then a third female passed me. So it was quite a um, close finish between uh, the, uh, the three females there. They were racing for eighth place. I uh, kicked down to about four and a half minute Ks for that last six Ks. So having the female runners pass me and get me going again actually helped my position in the men's race because you can see here I've got this guy who I ran with for about 90 minutes uh, early in the day. Um, I didn't see him after about 30k because he was steadily um, getting away from me. Uh, but um, I caught him with 3k to go straight past because uh, I'd uh, lifted my pace quite a bit for the last bit and I improved my position in the men's race uh, up to 17th place. Go John! strong amazing Woo! here we go john sanji coming in hot sixth Woo! place each group finish 10 26 28 loving every minute of it there we go well done so it all worked out okay our travel back was delayed yeah. due to a cyclone in the area um, about a day after the race and now we're both looking forward to the next one. For me, it's the Irrational South uh, 100 miler eight weeks after Tarawera. And I've got some footage here from my Journey to Tarawera um, vlogs, along with the week that I recorded the video. Uh, so you can see that I've been doing a fair bit of training on the Irrational South course, and uh, that's what I've got coming up. I entered the Irrational South, fairly certain that my foot pain would be uh, behind me by then. Um, however, it has come back a little bit just uh, with the race effort at Tarawera. I was disappointed with uh, the staff at the um, finish line. I, um, as soon as I finished, I got uh, corralled off to get weighed. I'm not sure why they needed to weigh me. Like, I, I would have been refueling anyway, but um, yeah, I wasn't allowed to stay and wait at the finish line for Nat to come and uh, see me. And um, then I asked for some pain relief because I got started to get the pain sort of at 9 and 10 uh, with my foot after I stopped and um, it took a long time for the uh, medical people to properly assess me with you know they couldn't increase the pain with any palpating or anything it was just um, it was just a very large uh, neural pain that was affecting me um, so yeah, it took 20 minutes to get some paracetamol and um, yeah it was obvious that they hadn't um, had that much experience with ultra runners they took my sock off and I thought oh well, you need to get your foot disinfected and cleaned and everything and actually there was no problem with my foot at all it was just I'd uh, trimmed back the nails a, a week before and you know there's different colored nails and half grown and things like that so just a normal um, normal feat for me so with the fall he um, insisted that I that he cleaned up my um, knee and I probably should have uh, just declined that offer because he was trying fairly hard to get the uh, scab off the um, the knee from the fall which had happened eight hours earlier um, it was very hard to get um, all, all the scab off um, but yeah the, the, not as much pain as what my foot was in um, but yeah hopefully I can uh, get on top of that and work out exactly what is the problem with, uh, with this impact um, related uh, pain that just builds up uh, the longer I run on it but overall I enjoyed the trip to New Zealand I enjoyed the race it was a uh, an amazing experience, um, both the trip and the, uh, the race, and of course the journey to Tarawera. I've done this weekly vlog series for over a year now, and um, uh, yeah, it's quite, been quite a burden on my time to do uh, editing of uh, videos on you know, Sunday afternoons instead of having a sleep and things like that. So I will be going back to just um, creating uh, vlogs or um, footage for um, important runs, whether that be a race or a great place to train. Um, but yeah, this, uh, this weekly um, series comes to an end um, as at the end of this video. Thanks very much for watching. I appreciate all your support. 
and I hope you got something out of the series that can help you on your running journey as well.